Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Long time no see. I've been busy with a lot of life stuff. Life always comes in the way for your hobby. But we're back today and today I'm going to show you my triple Tudor threat. I have three Tudor watches that I love, but I'm actually going to choose one favorite today. And it's going to be exciting to show you which is the which one is the favorite. Tudor in the recent years has uh, actually become one of my favorite brands. Maybe my top favorite brand of all time. I've owned four Tudor as of today, and I have brands. I have brands that I've owned uh, more watches from, but Tudor they consistently give me that feeling of satisfaction and quality, and that uh, it con they continue to provide provide me. They don't provide me. I actually buy them myself, of course. But the watches from Tudor give me a feeling of wanting to keep them far more than watches from other brands and therefore they might be my favorite brand of all time so uh let's flip the camera take a look at the watches together i'm gonna tell you which one of them is my favorite and then you can tell me which one of them is your favorite in the comments so let's not waste any more time let's just do it Tudor Ranger. The watch I didn't want to buy but that I bought for you guys because I know I could sell it if I wanted to sell it and the watch that blew my mind. It was the most boring watch that I've ever purchased but when putting it on the wrist it was just fantastic. It's just it's so not me but when on the wrist it's so me that it's I, it just puts a smile on my face. I bought it late uh, last summer, I think uh, September something, and it has stayed since and it's not leaving my collection. It's actually a keeper together with my Rolex GMT Master 2. My only two keepers that I'm actually really set on keeping for the moment. And uh, it's a fantastic watch. It feels good on the wrist. It looks so slimmed down and simple and it's thin and it's barely there when you have it on and uh, it actually has a smaller presence on your wrist than the Pelagos 39 and that watch is made of titanium so that says a lot it's just perfect for me I know it's boring in many eyes but when you put it on your wrist it this is a watch that you really have to experience let's take a look at some of the specifications for the Tudor Ranger here we go watch roll triple tutor threat inside let's start with the cheapest one and that would be the ranger here we have it the beautiful little tutor ranger simple yet so stylish and so beautiful specifications reference number m79950-0001 diameter 39 millimeters thickness 12 millimeters with the sapphire 11 millimeters without the sapphire we have a lug width of 20 millimeters and a lug to lug of 47.7 millimeters sapphire crystal a domed sapphire crystal actually AR coating on the inside we have Arabic numerals on the dial and we have an arrow shaped hand a baton shaped hand and a syringe hand water resistance is 100 meters the movement inside the Tudor Ranger is the in-house caliber MT5402 it's an in-house movement as I said uh, cosk certified with a bi-directional rotor 27 joules it beats at a 4 hertz frequency that's 28,800 vibrations per hour and it has a silicon balance spring and it gives you a power reserve of 70 hours bracelet 
has a T-fit clasp. As you see, the bracelet right here, three-fold uh, clasp on the bracelet, Tudor writing horizontally right there, and within that beautiful little clasp, we have the T-fit function. You pull it up, and you just give yourself eight more millimeters of adjustment on your wrist. Really nifty thing to have, and I'm actually... That's one of the things I would prefer to have on my watches today. That's the specifications of the Tudor Ranger. Pricing is around 3,300 US dollars. In Swedish, it's 33,000 Swedish crowns, and I'm gonna give you the conversions right there on the screen. That's the Tudor Ranger specifications. watch we're going to take a look at today is the Tudor Black Bay Pro GMT. I bought this watch a year ago and when I saw it when I unboxed the box it was just one beautiful beautiful beauty of a watch. I instantly felt that it might be too thick but I've still kept it along for a while because I really really stunned by the looks of it even though the thickness drags it down a little bit but let's take a look at the specifications. There it is. Beautiful looking little watch. Specifications on this baby. It's the reference M79470-0001. Diameter 39 millimeters. Thickness 14.6 millimeters. We have a lug width of 20 millimeters, exactly like the Ranger. We have a lug to lug of 47.8 eight millimeters that's uh, exactly like almost exactly like the Ranger as well uh, and we have a sapphire crystal that's also domed exactly like on the Ranger beautiful sapphire crystals that they make Tudor with beautiful air coating you can barely see there's a crystal there in some in some uh, angles actually water resistance is 200 meters we have a nice hefty screw down crown here on the right right side date window at three o'clock and um, what's thick what's ticking inside this baby it's the in-house caliber mt5652 it's an in-house cosc certified movement it has a bi-directional central rotor 28 jewels vibrates 28,800 times per hour it has an anti-magnetic silicone hairspring it gives you a power reserve of 70 hours just like the Ranger and then we have the riveted bracelet you see it steps down uh, and it has these faux rivets here uh, continuing down to the beautiful clasp with that Tudor shield no Tudor writing here but the Tudor shield is there instead which I actually prefer over the Ranger and inside this threefold clasp you see we have a lot of blingy shiny polished uh, parts here and we have the T-fit clasp in here as well there you go T fit clasp and yeah nice really nice those are the specifications of the Black Bay Pro comes in at about 43,500 Swedish crowns I think that's about 4,400 US dollars or 4,300 US dollars beautiful little thing Ah, the Pelagos 39 millimeters. Pelagos 39 millimeters uh, did something with me that very few watches actually do. It changed my perception of things. Before the Pelagos 39, I really hated titanium watches. I had owned one titanium watch. It was the Breitling Aerospace, and I did not like that at all. It feels like it felt like you had a cheap watch on your wrist. Uh, jingly, jangly, scrangly, whatever you want to call it. A cheap watch. It didn't feel like it had quality behind it. I don't want to upset any Breitling Aerospace owner. That was just maybe that particular model, model that I didn't like. 
but when I bought the Tudor Pelagos 39, I also bought it for the channel to get a video out of it, maybe two, and then sell it on. Because as a content creator, you have to do those kinds of things. You have to keep the content coming. But then it stuck with me. It felt really good. It looked fantastic. It has a Rolex Submariner look. It's black. It's white. It has the little, little dash of red. It has the T-fit adjustment, which actually all of these watches have. It's just a fantastic watch a fantastic titanium watch and it changed my perception about titanium and now i am actually open to buying uh, even more titanium watches tudor pelagos 39 millimeters let's take a look at the specifications oh this is the right lighting for this baby to shine there we have it tudor pelagos 39 millimeters reference m 2547N-0001 Diameter 39 millimeters They all are 39 millimeters across the board These three watches Thickness 11.8 Including that sapphire Because it's a flat sapphire It's not domed So as a complete package It's the thinnest, thinnest watch of them all Actually um, 11.8 Lug width 21 millimeters it has gotten some complaints for that 21 millimeters i don't mind because i don't change the straps but it's 21 nonetheless and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters the smallest in the bunch 47 millimeters lug to lug sapphire crystal grade 2 titanium overall except for the case back uh, we have a unidirectional bezel it clicks sounds good feels good to operate it's precise it's perfectly aligned stays in position really nice bezel to uh, actually handle we have a sun ray satin finish uh, made of ceramic on that bezel and actually looks really really beautiful yeah you can see in some lights it's black in some lights it's gray it's beautiful water resistance 200 meters screw down crown stainless steel case back as i said it's all titanium grade 2 but the case back is stainless steel you can see it right there movement inside the pelagos 39 is the caliber mt50 5400 it's in-house cosk certified they all are cosk certified they all are in-house it has a bi-directional central rotor 27 joules it also gives you a power reserve of 70 hours just like the ranger and the black bay pro it beats it vibrates at 28,800 vibrations per hour it has an anti-magnetic silicon balance spring the clasp all made of titanium and as on the other two guys inside the clasp we have the t-fit function right in there t-fit function but as you can see it's a little different because t-fit function great but also a diver's extension because this is a diver it's just uh, I, I always forget it's push here yeah okay there we have it diver's extension making it a little more of a diver than the other two watches and it is it's a true diver both of the other ones is a it's a GMT and a yeah Explorer watch Tudor Pelagos 39 pricing it it's the most expensive one 48,500 Swedish crowns that is about 4,800 US dollars I think conversion you can see right there those are the specifications so three totally different watches from the same brand but they really do not look the same and they have totally different functions but there are some similarities and actually there might be more similarities than there are differences let's take a look at them once more and see what they actually have in common because it's quite a lot actually and now I've said actually like four times yeah, the similarities are quite a few actually on these watches. Let's start with the diameter. 39 millimeters across the board. They're all 39 millimeters. Sure, they will wear a little differently based on the thickness and the lug-to-lug. -lug, but even there, the lug-to-lug -lug is 
uh, at around 47 millimeters sure we have something more and something less on some of them but between 47 and not all the way up to 48 it's in there so that's actually quite similar for all of them they have sapphire crystals of course at this price range but they have really good sapphire crystals crystals all three of them sure the ranger and the black bay pro gmt have domed sapphire crystals and the pelagos has a flat one but all three of them have ar coating on the inside great ar coating and it feels like a high quality sapphire crystal if if i'm capable of judging that it feels like that anyway but we have more similarities in the movement all three watches here have cosk certified in-house movements so if you're into the timekeeping of a watch and you want to have a watch that will perform really good uh, within the time timekeeping category you can't go wrong with either one of these cosk certified in-house movements 70 hours of power reserve on all three then we have 28,800 vibrations per hour on all three and then we have 28 jewels in the black bay pro gmt and 27 in the ranger and the pelagos but it's still basically the same you see what i'm saying here you get a lot of similarities in these three beautiful watches and sure some of them the pelagos has 200 meters of water resistance the black bay pro gmt has 200 meters of water resistance and the ranger has only 100 the ranger and the black bay pro gmt have a screw in crown without any uh, crown guards the pelagos has those crown guards because it's a diver you need to protect that crown when diving the pelagos has the diver extension the two of them the two other don't have that but they all three come with the t-fit function within the clasp which is actually great to have uh, yeah so that's similar in some ways different in other ways but still in my opinion more similar than different okay guys welcome to the best part of the video or at least it's the part that I like the most this is the review part where I actually get to tell you what I like and what I dislike about the watches the pros and the cons I've changed the scenery a little bit because this is the, actually the most beautiful part of the video my personal opinions on these three watches I've owned them for over a year and that actually matters because I usually I, this is important for me when I do unboxings and first impressions videos I do not label them as reviews because they are not reviews I can only review watches that I've owned for a while and I, that I've actually worn on my wrist for a while and these three watches I own them they're my watches they're not sent to me from someone else and I have worn them for over a year not an equal amount I have worn the Ranger the most then I worn the Pelagos the second most and then I've actually worn the Tudor Black Bay GMT Pro the least but I've still worn them enough to be able to tell you my personal experiences with them what I liked what I disliked and the pros and cons simply so let's not waste any more time because this is a long video let's start with the Tudor Ranger and the pros and cons on that watch let's go <laughs> Once again, the Ranger. Let's start with the cons because it's more fun to uh, start at the negative and then go upwards. And I only have one con with this watch actually, and it's that it's not for everyone. And this is not even a personal con because it is for me. But when I first saw it, it wasn't even for me, as I've explained before. It's the look of the watch is really simple. And for some people, that's really off-putting. It doesn't happen a lot in the dial. It's clean, it's simple, it's boring, some might say. It's quite boring when you just look at the dial. Nothing happens, no dynamic, no special colors, nothing. So one con for some people might be that it looks like a boring watch. Con number one, boring. The only con that I have. Let's head straight over to the positive things, the pros. 
pro number one is the con from the other uh, from the cons it's boring it's scaled back it looks clean and with my arms with my tattoos with my colors and busy look it looks really really good i really love that i mean the cleanliness the boring look sure it might be off-putting but when i when i put it on my wrist i loved it and i love how it looks when i wear it it's a Boring watch, but it looks great on your wrist. It looks classic. F Pro number two is actually how it feels. It feels fantastic. When I put it on, I barely feel it there. I forget about it. It's soft. It's good. It's nice to wear. It's thin. It's just a perfect watch on wrist. The bracelet tapers perfectly down to that clasp, and it's yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful wearable watch and it feels good on wrist. So that's pro number two. Pro number three is the sapphire crystal. It's a domed sapphire crystal and it looks wonderful and it feels wonderful. It's soft, high quality sapphire crystal makes that the point number three. Point number four is actually a crown. I love when I have to operate this crown. It's just the right amount of big and small. Not too big, not too small. To the rose stamped, perfect to use with my fat fingers. I have to say the crown is a big pro. And another pro has to be the T-fit function within the clasp. This is gonna be a pro on all three watches. I love me some on the fly adjustability in that bracelet. When it gets hot, when it gets cold, you loosen it up, you tighten it in. It's really something to have and I look for it in every watch purchase in the future. T-fit clasp, big, big pro in my book. And that's actually the pros and cons of the Tudor Ranger. Let's head over to the next watch. Okay, 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 that was the Tudor Ranger. Now let's head straight over to the Tudor Black Bay Pro GMT and let's talk about the pros and cons on that watch. Okay, now the Black Bay Pro GMT is up on the chopping board and let's start with the cons just as we did on the Ranger because they're the most boring part. The first con that I have with this watch is actually the riveted bracelet. I didn't mind the riveted bracelet on my Tudor Black Bay the Pepsi one when I owned that watch uh, but as the years have gone by I actually have some problems with it and it's not the faux rivets I don't mind the faux rivets uh, the problem is that it, the symmetry of the bracelet looks a little broken we have it's a it's a nice bracelet but the first and second link they step down they have this little step in between them that it doesn't flow down uh, f from thicker I mean from wider to slimmer it has this step and it goes from the first step to the second step but then the stepping just stops and the three links that are closest to the clasp they go perfectly flush together right onto the clasp and the steppage is in those two first links. I hope you understand this because English is not my native language. I'm trying to explain that it's a step with the two first ones and then it goes right down and that's the problem. If it only stepped all the way that would have looked better, more symmetrical, but now it breaks up the symmetry in a way that I do not like, actually. Four rivets, no problem. The steppage is actually the problem. Uh, con number two, and we have to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room, and it's there for a reason. When this watch was released, everyone talked about the thickness. Everyone wanted to know about the thickness. And it is quite thick. I mean, it's over 14 millimeters thick. You cannot get away from the fact that it is, it is a little too thick. And people were talking about it. I mean, reviewers out there were saying that, yeah, it's thick, but it's not an issue. It's not a deal breaker. But it might be for some people, actually. And it actually was a deal breaker for me because I almost sold the watch. And I actually have a listing on it right now. But I'm thinking about 
pulling that listing back because it just looks so good it might compensate for that thickness but when I wear it on my wrist if sometimes it feels a little off balance the Tudor Black Bay uh, Pepsi GMT that I had had the same thickness but it actually had a, a wider lug to lug so it didn't feel that off balanced as this watch does the clasp was a little bit wider on the Pepsi as well and this clasp is a little bit smaller so some days it actually feels like it wobbles on my wrist a little bit and some days it actually feels perfectly fine so some days it's an issue some days it isn't but it is there it doesn't have to be there I mean this is a expensive watch Tudor is a respected brand they've got the technology they got the history they could have made this watch slimmer without a shadow of a doubt I mean I tried out a San Martin homage that was slimmer than this one and that had a GMT function as well so they could have made it slimmer but they didn't I don't know why but I wish that they did because now it's actually a con on my list of cons and then we're just heading straight out, straight in to the pros. It's a stunning watch. I mean, it's one of the most blue, beautiful watches that I've ever put on my wrist. I love the looks of the watch. I've actually got compliments from other people about the watch. It's a wonderful, wonderful looking watch. The, the, the overall package is great. That's a nice, nice con. I mean, the combination of that faux patina, it's not too much, not too little. It's just wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, pro number two is actually the finish this watch feels I, I don't know much about finish and that's why I don't talk about it often and a lot but it, it feels like a step above the other two tutors that I'm featuring in, th in this video it feels smoother to the touch it's soft it almost feels like my Rolex GMT Master 2 in the quality of the finish every edge is smooth every little thing on this watch feels like butter when putting it on when taking it off it's just uh, experience above the other two watches and uh, that's a really nice pro in my eyes another pro is as I said on the Ranger it's the T-fit clasp it has to be a pro here it wasn't on it was a pro on the Ranger and it's a pro here wonderful function gives me the possibility to quick adjust the bracelet and just just so great and so important for me in the future when buying watches and another pro is actually the sapphire it's a domed sapphire and it's has a really nice AR coating and it almost vanishes in some lights I barely see it but it is there it's soft it has that little vintage vibe because of the domed shape of it and it's a wonderful sapphire crystal I mean it makes the dial pop straight at you and yeah I don't know much about sapphire crystals and quality and high quality or low quality feels like a great sapphire crystal and the last pro that I have about this watch is the crown it's a substantial crown bigger than on the Ranger and bigger than on the Pelagos and it feels wonderful to operate it's buttery smooth it grips really nice with my fat fingers uh, even have a, even if I've downed a bag of chips before I mean it's so nice one of the best crowns that I've ever had the pleasure to operate actually so that has to be the last pro on my list those are the pros of the Tudor Black Bay Pro GMT and last but not least the Tudor Pelagos 39 what did I like what did I dislike let's check it out hey ho let's go let's go with the cons first of all sorry to say it maybe it's titanium I don't know why but this watch is actually quite sharp it has some sharp edges on it uh, on the bracelet on the clasp not so much on the watch itself uh, maybe the lugs are a little sharp but it's mostly on the bracelet and you can feel it when you 
put the watch on when you take the watch off it is sharp it is sharper than it has to be and it's not a unique thing for this watch I actually had uh, my Omega Speedmaster was quite sharp sharper than this one uh, uh, to be honest my Omega Seamaster the bracelet was also sharp so maybe it's me maybe I'm a little sensitive but I can feel the difference between sharpness and and smooth edges Tudor Pelagos um, is a sharp watch the Black Bay Pro uh, GMT is a really soft watch, but this one is sharp, so it has to be a con. It is sharp. Yeah, and let's head straight into the pros. One of the big pros with this watch is the classic diver look. And the classic diver look is this black, white, quite simple, time only, very legible. You know it when you see it. It has been around forever, this classic diver look, and to, the Tudor Pelagos pulls it off really good, with just a little, little dash of red. It's beautiful, it's simple, it's classic, it has stood against the, the, it has stood against the tides of time, is that what they say? Nevertheless, a beautiful watch, a classic looking watch, and great by any imagination of the word. Next, next thing on the pros list has to be the bezel. It looks stunning. I mean, it gives you that ghosted look in some lights, and then it gives you that perfectly pitch black look in some, light, some lights. And then sometimes it's a little gray, sometimes it's a little bluish. It's a really nice uh, bezel insert to look at, but it also is a really nice bezel to operate. The 60 clicks, I mean, you can feel every every click 60 clicks unidirectional bezel and the most important thing it feels great when you turn it around you can hear every click if you close your eyes and if you put a, some kind of headphones on your head you could actually feel every click as well so it's the perfect combination of both worlds. It looks great and it feels great. When you turn it around, it almost feels like, uh, you know that Tudor has uh, some, some kind of small ceramic ball bearings within that lock there. When you click it down, it feels really tactile and perfectly beautiful. And that's almost if, as if they have those ball bearings within the bezel and when you turn it, those ball bearings click within each other. That's a great feeling. And when we're talking about the clasp, since we're looking at it, another pro is the prolonged clasp. I really love this long clasp. The Submariner has it a well. It fits the T-fit uh, function within it. So that's also a pro. So I'm going to give this watch two pros for that beautiful long clasp it balances the watch greatly because it's long on the back side of your hand and then the lug to lug is long on the over side of your hand i have never had any problems with this watch hanging over to either side of my wrist it just sits there and i think it's thanks to that to the size of that clasp and then the t-fit function as i said on the ranger and as i said on the black bay pro gmt it's wonderful and it's uh, uh, every bit as wonderful right here and this watch also has a diver's uh, extension because it's a true diver the pelagos line is uh, dedicated to the divers but i'm not going to put that uh, function on my pros list first of all because i don't dive so i don't care about it and second of all it has uh, it doesn't look great i mean i don't know why they did this but if you when i have this watch sized to my wrist i can hide the diverse extensions perfectly well you see the bracelet is all the links look perfectly fine and they straight up melt into the clasp but if you do not have my wrist size you might end up having to show a piece of that diverse extension and then it breaks up the look i mean that doesn't look good at all you can see it and yeah it would ruin my day if i had to wear it like that but fortunately i don't have to so it's not a con but it's not a pro because I do not care about it. And another pro, and I never thought I'd say this, is the titanium. The material feels so light. I barely feel this watch on my hand. It feels on my arm. It feels like wearing a G-Shock. It's so, uh, I mean, 
just it just feels great. I I'm, I'm lacking in the words to describe how really good this feels because you can barely feel it there. I had this notion before that if a watch doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel like it's high quality, but that this watch changed my mind on that. It feels lightweight and that feels really good. And then we head straight on to the last pro, the crown. This has a little smaller crown than the Tudor Black Bay Pro and it has crown guards so it's protected. But even though it's smaller and even though it's protected by those crowns, it's really easy to operate. I don't know what Tudor does with the gnarling on those crowns, but I have no problem op opening it up, winding it. It's really nice, and I love that it has the Tudor shield on it and not the rose. Um, yeah, I'm really liking the crown. I'm, I'm, I think the Tudor are nailing the crowns on their watches. Those are the pros of the Tudor Pelagos 39. One thing I've learned on my watch journey and especially when uh, buying a, a couple of these tutors that I've showed you today is that looks are really deceiving and on two of these watches I actually learned that lesson really hard. The first one was on the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Such a beautiful and stunning watch and the look wasn't deceiving in that way because it's still a really stunning and beautiful watch. It's one, one of the most stunning watches I've ever owned actually. But when you put it on your wrist and when you see that hefty thickness, it's actually kind of might be kind of a deal breaker for some. And it was a deal breaker for me as well because I'm actually selling the watch but now that I've looked at it once again during the making of this video I'm actually falling for it a little again and it's really comfortable on wrist and it's so smooth and the materials materials are so nice so I might be considering keeping it but I don't know. And the other watch that really taught me a lesson about looks are deceiving was the Ranger. I really didn't like the way it looked. I was dead cert certain that I was going to sell it once I've uh, once I was finished with the video about it, and then I put it on my wrist and I felt almost instantly that this is going to be a keeper because that watch it might look boring as hell and it might look too clean and too simple, but it's a great watch when you put it on your wrist and it just feels feels perfect. It might have to do with my sleeve. I have a lot of tattoos. I have a lot going on on my left arm and when I put a clean watch like the Tudor Ranger on my wrist it's just there's just a synergy there and uh, the messy messy tattoos and then the clean watch with just the time and barely any text on that dial. There's something about it. I don't know. Yeah and as I said in the beginning of this video and I actually say it in every review that I do these opinions, these pros and cons, dislikes and likes, they're just my personal opinions. It's a very subjective thing what you like and what you dislike about a watch. It's like what you like and dislike about a movie or a painting or a song that someone wrote. It's totally subjective. These are just my opinions and you should not take my opinions for with any kind of it's they're worth nothing basically I'm just showing you three watches and I'm telling you what I like if you want to buy one of these watches do not base your opinion or your buying or not buying on this video try to try the watch out for yourself in some way possible just buy it or have a friend that has it go to him and try it on or try it on uh, if you have an AD close by try it on form your own opinion do not listen to me, I'm just giving you my opinion, do what you want with it. I'm just trying to help out if you cannot do any of those other steps. So the most important thing is it's your opinion and what I say doesn't matter at all. What I like doesn't matter because you might dislike it and what you dislike, what I dislike doesn't matter because you might like it. Yeah, so do what you want with it. By owning these three watches for a while, for over a year, I have felt them on my wrist, I have worn them, I have used them and now I can with confidence say that the Tudor Ranger is my favorite of the three and the two other guys might leave my collection. Anyway, my friends, 
Thank you for joining me today. Hope you liked the video. Hope to see you again. If you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up as usual. And if you didn't like it, please give me a thumbs down. Tell me what you didn't like and I'll try to do better until the next video. But I can tell you already, these tattoos don't wash off. I get a lot of comments about the trashy tattoos. Have you been in jail? No, I haven't. I haven't actually ever gotten a speeding ticket even. So uh, I can't do anything about the tattoos. So it's not worth commenting that. But anything else uh, regarding the content, I'm reading it and I'm trying to better myself along the way. I hope you have a great day. Oh, ooh, ooh, sorry. If you love the video, please consider subscribing. Have a really great day. Summer is here. We're going to have a lot of content coming out this summer. So I hope to see you again. Bye bye.